X Defiant is out, and in this quick video, I'll be showing you the best settings to get a competitive edge in the game above everyone else. So let's get straight into the game itself. If I head into settings in the top right, you'll have all your usual things under gameplay and UI, extremely similar to Call of Duty. You can pretty much copy and paste your settings across from there. So ADS field of view changing and things like that, field of view, etc as well as a ton of different extra options such as breaking reloads when you sprint it, which are usually defaults in game. The only thing I'd really recommend changing here besides everything else to your preference is down at the very bottom, you'll find network info and ping. I'd recommend at least turning on ping just so you know what's happening in the top left corner of your screen. And of course, if you'd like, there's an FPS calendar here as well. But for accurate numbers, I'll be using a separate overlay, River Tuna, through MSI Afterburner as such. It gives me a ton more detail, VRAM usage, FPS, frame times and more which aren't really given through these here you can enable the diagnostic display but this doesn't really seem to show much at all i assume this will only really show at times when you're getting crazy packet loss etc so it's probably worthwhile leaving it on just so you know what exactly is happening with your internet when things go wrong so really just these three here fps and ping that's pretty much it on the controller tab if you're using one it's a good idea to make sure that you check the aim response and aim assist as there's a bunch of different settings here that could help improve gameplay based on what you play with usually and of course on top of this you can check the button layout and the stick layout just to make sure everything's bound the same way that you like there's a ton of different options here those of course will give you a physical advantage by knowing what exactly is going on knowing what to predict when you're actually playing on the audio and voice chat tab i'd make sure to lower the dialogue volume the ui volume and the music volume everything else here should give you a more competitive advantage having them up obviously at the bottom you can enable or disable voice chat completely if you'd like and make sure that you're using the correct microphone here should you choose to use it then finally the video and graphics tab is where we can actually get some true performance out of our game by playing around with things here on the video tab here there's a couple of options that you definitely need to change for a huge performance boost off of the bat less input latency making you better at the game triple buffering should definitely be turned off for better input latency reduced latency turned on and if you have an nvidia gpu enable nvidia reflex low latency as well if you have an nvidia gpu and a really low powered cpu change it to on plus boost for better input latency there. Then scrolling down, you should make sure that VSync is turned off as well. These options are hugely important when it comes to input latency. VSync should only ever be turned on if you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up properly. Then the next most important option is DirectX 12. Make sure that this is turned off, otherwise you're giving up pretty much 30% of your performance just by having it enabled. After applying, you will need to restart your game. You should immediately see a boost in performance and yeah, we're back up to a solid 120, which is great. So back to options, video and graphics, let's go ahead and talk about every option below this point. Obviously, lowering things is likely going to improve your FPS, and that's great. However, there are a few options that you need to look out for. Those are resolution scale. Make sure that this is always set to 100, otherwise the game will be needlessly blurry. Sharpening is your preference, of course, but all the way down at the very bottom, we also have lens flares, which I definitely recommend turning off pretty much in all cases to give you better visibility all the time, as if you happen to get a lens flare, while you're busy fighting, it could distract you quite a bit or cover up what you're trying to shoot at. Everything else here, you can probably lower to get generally better performance, but a few things count above the others. Usually, object detail and texture detail are something to worry about, but here, it defaults to 60, even with the highest options, and it's only using a solid 3.6 gigs of VRAM, so it shouldn't really be too much of an issue unless you're running a seriously low-powered GPU, in which case you can lower pretty much everything, and object detail, of course, should lower the amount of VRAM used. I do think we'll need to reload into a game to see the difference though. Anyways, let's quickly run through the rest of the options. Frame rate limit, I would definitely recommend turning off if you're trying to benchmark the game to see what kind of performance you're getting, and if you're trying to save power once you're done with everything, you can consider re-enabling the FPS limit just to keep things cooler in your system and use less power if you're on a laptop or a portable device. Then, starting from the top here, shadow quality all the way down for the best performance, spot shadows as well here, as you're not really going to be focusing on shadows at all. While there are player shadows, if we apply this, you should see that the shadows are still visible pretty much no matter how low this setting goes, and of course the same should be said about other players as well. So there's a shadow here on very high for another player, and all the way down to the lowest option, there still are player shadows, so you're not getting a tactical advantage leaving any of the shadow options all the way up. Therefore, keep them all down for better performance. Then, spot shadow resolution, also all the way down, contact shadows, 
come from objects in the scene and the lowest option is off here. Once again, if we apply and have a look at other players, there'll be less shadows in general, but players still have shadows, so these don't matter either. Once again, lower these all the way down and you should see a general FPS improvement. We've already moved up to around 125-ish through gameplay. Resolution scale and sharpening we've already covered. Leave these at 100% and sharpening is entirely your preference. 7 is the default. Particle detail I'd recommend lowering if for some reason you're dropping frames when explosions and things like that are happening. I wouldn't recommend leaving this high at all, just as it could add random frame drops. Volumetric fog all the way down for the least amount of fog and the best visibility through it when it does show up, which shouldn't be all that often at all. Global reflections. You can see player reflections on reflective surfaces and floors. Let's see if turning this off actually has an effect on that. Of course, these will be less noticeable than shadows, for example. For that, though, we'll need to fight until we get inside. All right, so finally making our way in here, there's a couple of reflective floors. Let's see if we can see them. Obviously, though, reflective floors will be much more difficult to see people on. All right, let's see. Nope, you can still see people in reflections, so having this option set to off has pretty much no effect on people. I'm pretty sure the same goes for reflective glass surfaces. People should probably always be visible. Local reflection, let's see if that has an effect. And let's see. Seems like this one does have an effect. There was a bit of a shadow, but I think that's just a shadow. And there goes that testing. So as reflections seem to have vanished there, if you would think that reflections give you a competitive advantage, then it's probably a good idea to leave them on at least low rather than off in that second local reflections option. So local reflection, I'll have it on low at lowest, otherwise you seem to lose a slight competitive advantage. Vegetation quality, obviously all the way down, shouldn't have an effect on anything really. And the same goes for subsurface scattering. It has a very subtle effect that shouldn't really be noticeable or at all important through general gameplay here. Ambient occlusion has once again yet to do with shadows, but these aren't usually player shadows, and cranking this all the way down to low shouldn't have any effect on competitive advantage. It's more just objects casting shadows on each other, such as boxes and things like that. It'll be slightly adjusted shadows in between. Hopping into the next game here, you can see ambient occlusion most likely has an effect to do with, say, grass shadows. So vegetation quality will lower all the way down to lowest. You can see there's practically no difference in most vegetation around the scene. So here's low and here's high hi nothing really. Then subsurface scattering off and ambient occlusion off as well. A couple of shadows have changed mainly in the grass, but yet again, that's not going to be something you're caring about in general gameplay. Player shadows are still visible for you and everyone else, of course. Object detail, as you've already seen, doesn't really have too much of an effect on how things look. I've had it on zero this entire time and I've actually dropped to 2.9 gigs of VRAM usage. At 60%, it was all the way around four. And I'm pretty sure this option here has a huge amount of weight on what exactly you're or VRAM usage will be for your graphics card. So keeping this on 60 should give you pretty much the same performance throughout general gameplay as having this lower or even higher really. If you have more than 6 gigs of VRAM, you can comfortably crank this all the way up and it shouldn't really have an effect on your performance in game. So I'm getting 140 now. In the next game, I should be getting similar. Obviously, different maps mean different performance, but generally VRAM usage doesn't always mean a hit in performance, especially if you got a ton of extra lying around. The same goes for extra streaming detail. This will use more memory, so probably a bit more RAM and a bit more VRAM, so having this turned up on higher-end graphics cards is probably not going to have too much of a downside to it. These are usually the two options, or one option really, that I'd recommend keeping higher if you'd like to make sure the game looks pretty good, even though you're lowering pretty much everything else for a more competitive edge. Obviously, lens flares have off for the best competitive edge. Water quality should have almost no impact on how you play the game, so crank this all the way down. Chromatic aberration can be slightly distracting. If you like it, you can leave it on, but personally, it's a bit too much for me. I'll turn it off here completely for, again, a small competitive advantage. Finally, terrain quality has to do with VRAM usage on your system. If you happen to lower this, it shouldn't really change terrain too much when it comes to how the models actually look and seeing people over hills and things like that. It should really just have to do with how the ground looks throughout general gameplay when it comes to textures. So here's low and here's high. The terrain did actually reload when I changed this option, so it does have some kind of effect. It didn't really impact my performance at all. Neither my VRAM usage, so I'll leave it all the way up for a better looking game. And that's pretty much it. We've lowered pretty much everything all the way down as low as possible, except for resolution, which should be 100%, sharpening, your preference, and terrain quality, as well as object detail, 
an extra streaming distance if you have more VRAM available or a 6K graphics card for example, leaving this up should result in a generally better looking game with almost no performance impact at all. So with our optimized settings here, we should actually have a better looking game than everything cranked down to low and our performance should actually be pretty much comparable if not exactly the same as moving everything all the way down as low as possible. The game still looks more than playable and if you'd like, when you're comfortably sitting at around 140 or something like that frames, you can go ahead and raise a couple of options as this game doesn't seem to be all that demanding, it seems to be relatively well optimized. I'm happy to see that games are finally coming out where they run on a lot of hardware and they run really well, especially on expensive hardware for example. Certain game releases as of late have been running not the best on most systems and this one seems to be an exception to that in that it runs pretty well. Do let me know in the comments down below your experience as well as your graphics card slash how many FPS you're getting just so we can get a better idea in the community. But besides that, that's really it. You now know how to optimize your game to get the best possible performance. The only one thing on top of this that I may actually recommend is the display mode at the very top. I find that when I die or respawn or open up a menu, my cursor comes free and I can click out of the window, causing the game to minimize and it adjusts my resolution and things like that, which can be very distracting and of course, time consuming. If you set this to windowed full screen instead, your display resolution should be set to the maximum and Anyways, refresh rate the same as well, and applying this, you'll find that if you accidentally click out, instead of the game just minimizing and readjusting your entire display, it's just a click back and you're back in game. I'm getting a solid 130-ish FPS here, 126, 27, and if we switch back to full screen, we're getting almost exactly the same number of FPS. 127, 128, yeah, it's pretty much almost exactly the same. So on most modern systems, it shouldn't make too much of a difference. Usually having it set to full screen does result in better gameplay, but Windows 11 on a relatively modern system, there doesn't seem to be too much of a difference, if not none at all. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter of mine. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.